You know, from time to time, we are all going to use a public restroom. I don't think most people understand how truly vulnerable they are when in a public restroom, sitting on the potty, or standing in front of a urinal with your most private of private parts in your hands. Getting caught with your pants down is so dangerous, it's actually a cliche that says getting caught with your pants down. So as uncomfortable as a subject as this is, the training is simple, common sense, and anyone can do it. But before we do, at the end of this video, there's an instructional video clip I made just for you and your family on how to escape from a specific kind of grabbing attack. It's the most common way people grab and abuse each other in this kind of situation. If practiced properly, it's 100% effective. That means it works every single time. It is humanly impossible for an abuser to hang on to their victim if the victim executes this move properly. You don't have to be particularly strong, you don't have to be particularly quick, and you don't have to be in the best physical shape ever. With this attack, uh, abductors almost always grab kids in this way when they're dragging them away to a pretty dark and horrific end. This move could be the most important move you ever learn. So stay to the end and watch this free training. Make the best of it. It does take two people to practice this move. So buddy up and let's have some good, safe fun. Do you want to be as safe, as reasonably as you possibly can? Do you want to be safe in knowing that your children are as safe as they reasonably can be? When your kids use a public restroom, make sure they don't fall prey to a restroom predator. Subscribe to this YouTube channel and give me feedback. If you want the best of the best escape training, see us at safesensei.com. Rule number one, never be alone in public. Work the buddy system, especially with our kids. Once you're one-on-one -on -one with the predator, they're either gonna hurt you really bad right there and then, or they're gonna take you to a remote location and do the same darn thing. Remember that if an attacker is trying to take you somewhere, it's because they can't do to you right there what they're gonna do to you someplace else. This predator probably already knows right where he or she is gonna take you. If you or your family don't have some type of honest, real training, the predator will have their way with you. You know, we have to assume, it is responsible to assume that predators are good at what they do, and that is just plain evil. One common attack is to follow a child or anyone into a restroom and lock the door behind him. Rule number two, never go with a bad guy. If a bad person, a predator, is trying to tell you, come with me or I'll hurt you or I'll do something else terrible, it's a scare tactic that they use. They make you an easy victim. Don't be an easy victim. If you or your child go with them, statistically, historically speaking, you'll be dead in 35 minutes or less. Many times, victims don't last 10 minutes. If the predator tries to take you by force, kick, scream, scratch, bite, sit down on the ground like a two-year-old throwing a tantrum and do whatever you have to do to not go with them. Or if your awareness level was up, you probably could have escaped the entire thing with just a little bit of the right training. Safe Sensei training focuses not only on early detection to potential danger, but also teaches you some extremely effective, extremely painful, for the bad guy painful, easy self-defense moves that even the score with almost any abuser. Now, back to the restroom. As soon as you've entered the enclosed space of a public restroom, if there is a predator hiding or a predator follows you in and locks the door behind him, you will be alone with the predator with no help whatsoever. You'll be locked in. If you're not properly trained, you'll be damaged physically most likely sexually assaulted, and if you survive, victims always suffer psychological and emotional damage. It rubs the lotion on its skin. It does this whenever it's told. <gasps> Mr. My family will pay cash. Whatever ransom you're asking for, they'll pay it. <laughs> it rubs the lotion on its skin or else it gets the hose again. 
please avoid this situation completely. I didn't want to die. And I didn't want to die on a linoleum trailer bathroom floor. And I didn't want my story to end there. It is only now, nearly a year after she was violently sexually assaulted in the bathroom of a Ballard car dealership, that Lindsay is finally able to speak out about her ordeal. He's 250 pounds, so he has 120 pounds on me. Um, and I was losing. I was losing this battle, and it was terrifying. Prosecutors say the he in this case is this man, Christopher Edward Teal. He had a warrant out for his arrest going back to 2016, um, which was very troubling to me. Teal was wanted by police for criminal trespassing after being accused of breaking into and squatting at a Magnolia home. This Seattle Times photo in November of 2017 shows Teal as a resident at the Ballard Nicholsville homeless encampment. Get the right training and escape. The quality of your safety depends on the quality of your training and how serious you are about personal security for you and your family. There aren't many things you can buy that last forever. Safe Sensei situational training indeed lasts forever. Please teach it to your family, your children, your wives and husbands. Make it generational so your children can teach their children. If you do, I guarantee you someone in your family along the way will use what they learned. Might be your daughter, might be your six-year-old grandson. You know, you don't wake up in the morning and, and think, you know, today evil is going to rear its ugly head in my family. You don't wake up and think, you know, today I'm probably going to be assaulted, abducted. Abuse of every kind happens every single day, and it's happening right now somewhere. It's just waiting to strike you or your family. There are some common sense situations to avoid, or at least have the common sense to be at a red alert level when you are exposed to dangerous situations and always have an escape route planned. My life's work is to change the world's view on domestic violence, bullies, and attackers. And there's a couple of different kinds of self-defense. There's the kind of self-defense you do in a dojo or a gym with a, a fight instructor. You can spend months, weeks, years perfecting your fighting techniques, and this is a good thing. I started my martial arts training in the earliest 1970s, so as I sit here and film this video right now, I have been practicing martial arts and fighting for 50 years. I was a karate fighter for 40 of those years. I grew up in a really tough neighborhood, and I have the practical experience to tell you what really works and what really doesn't. It frustrates me to no end when I see martial arts instructors teach worthless moves that simply don't work. Good self-defense builds confidence, promotes health, all-around well-being, and it'll save your tail when violence rears its ugly head. However, if you don't plan on spending hundreds of hours training and you need to get your family safe, as safe as they can be, as fast as they can be, as soon as possible, then this kind of self-defense training is a must. It's easy to learn. Again, you don't have to be quick. You don't have to be strong. You don't have to be in great shape. It's not as physical as it is tactical. A dangerous weapon is your mind. Let's use it. Think of this kind of training like line dancing. weird at first, but after no time, your body kind of does the moves automatically. So let's move on to rule three. Make your self-defense decisions before you're in a bad situation. If you're in a difficult situation and you're trying to decide, what should I do? Uh, or if you ever hear somebody say, we've got to do something, they are probably about to do the wrong thing. With Safe Sensei Escape and situational training, I want you to think about the most likely scenarios 
average people go through and have something to do that works in each situation. You know, learning how to split and when to run. Run away! Run away! Run away! Run away! Can save your whole family. Learning how and when to use your voice is very powerful. Matter of fact, your voice is one of the very most powerful weapons you have. Think about a small, sensitive girl playing in the mud, uh, enjoying the park, and think about how, how evil views that little girl. Now think about going around the corner and all of a sudden you hear that little girl scream. <coughs> What the hell sound is that? Coyotes must have got a cat. Your heart stops. Anybody who's been a parent has a primal sense that rears up in them. If that little girl said, stop touching me, I'm scared. Bam, I'm telling you, every good person that could hear would instantly turn around and look. If you heard a woman scream, stop, stop, that hurts. Everybody's gonna look and defuse the power of the predator. Every good person wants to help. The most common tool that cops use is their voice also. They call it a command voice. So if you've ever watched cops, if you're, you've ever seen anybody get arrested, you know they, they overwhelm people with their voice. Anyone that has two legs and a voice can learn this training and be much safer. So make sure you subscribe and visit us at safesensei.com. Spend a few minutes every day with the people you love doing something that's fun, life-saving, and lasts forever. If once in your life your child uses one thing they learned from us, then our time was well spent and yours was too. Learn to be a Safe Sensei instructor yourself. There's no problem learning these moves. We would love nothing more for you to share this information with everyone. Share it with everyone you know. When good people help good people, this is how we combat evildoers. Subscribing and training with the Safe Sensei team probably be the most valuable training you'll ever experience, and you can do it as a family. If you have a specific need, contact me at safesensei.com and I, most likely me or one of my team members, will contact you back. We'll help you every way we can. So make sure and subscribe and give me your feedback. Let's get on to rule number four. Always check a public restroom before you lock the door. Checking as best you can before you enter is a vitally important practice and it can save your tail. If you see that others are in the restroom from the outside, it doesn't mean it's safe. Just as soon as you sit down on the potty, you are virtually helpless from an attack, for instance, underneath the door. If somebody grabs you by the feet and pulls you out of the stall, you're gonna bash your head on the throne. And then you'll have a head injury. And if you do wake up, if you're lucky, you will have been assaulted, robbed, or whatever else. You know, there's places besides stalls people can hide. Bad guys can hide in stalls and lift their feet up. There's also usually some type of little closet, a supply closet, where they keep, you know, toilet paper and soap and such. Also, nobody ever looks up. Mechanical equipment is in the ceiling, the heating and air conditioning equipment. And there's usually a little trap door that gets up there. It's got to be big enough for a human to get up to because that's how they get up and service it. So... Remember, once you lock the door behind you, an attacker could pop out of anywhere and get you. Once you're sitting down doing your business, you are so incredibly vulnerable. It doesn't take long for a predator to take you out. You know, the, t the technique of grabbing your feet and pulling you out from underneath was taught to me by a kind of a spooky uh, secret dude. He was a member of the Central Intelligence Agency and he had an incredible mind. Oh my gosh, this guy could remember things. It was an honor to work with him. But he taught me some of the ways that bad people get damage, hurt, or murder good people. You know, he taught me that when things go bad, they go bad real quick.
you know, at a park or a picnic, it's the most jovial event. Everybody's having a good time and bam, things go bad quick. Using your voice and any other tools you have to bring awareness to the situation is always the best thing. There's no good reason for any person to have their hands in your stall. So if you're sitting down and you you get your, your awareness level is up and you get the sense that something's going wrong, jump up as fast as you can and pull your pants up. And your pants are down around your ankles. Uh, you can't run, you can't fight. So jump up as fast as you can. People instinctively want to wipe themselves clean before they pull their pants up. Listen, clean yourself later, survive now. Also, it's instinct for a, a, a male to hang on to their most private of private parts when they're standing at a urinal. Getting attacked from the side or behind, being ready mentally to defend yourself with your hands rather than go into the fetal position and protect your you, you and your stuff is, uh, it's, it's not natural. It takes some training. It takes you putting your mind in that situation and working through it a handful of times so that when you're in that situation, you can remember and recognize what is happening to you so you can escape the entire encounter. Stalls are private. Anyone can hide. So we just want to do our best to use common sense. Now, if you're in a stall, a bad guy is going to try to be quiet, but always listen for breathing Listen for shuffling around. If no one was in there or you thought no one was in there and you sense someone's in there, get out of there right then. The second that you sense something's wrong, something's wrong. And listen, I got some bad news for you guys. Uh, uh, females, women, girls, they're all better at this than males. Women seem to have a sixth sense. If, if you're with your girlfriend, um, your mom, your sister, and they sense something's wrong and they tell you, something is probably wrong. So just do the smart thing and always make the safest choice. Every situation that can be should be easily avoided. However, if you're not paying attention and it happens to you, the attacker will impose their will on you. Your child your loved ones. How will you feel if it happens to you, your wife, your daughter? This training is so easy and such common sense that everyone should know what to do. Uh, definitely know what not to do. As a parent, it's my responsibility to teach my children as best I can who is safe and who is dangerous. You know, our, our children should be prepared for the unexpected. And with the homeless situation growing the way that it is, public restrooms aren't just inhabited by druggies, but also mentally ill people that have no home for a reason. You know, sometimes they themselves don't even know what they're doing. Schizophrenia, drug-induced psychosis, disconnect the sufferer from reality. So chances are that even if a sicko gets caught They'll likely serve no serious jail time, and they surely won't get the mental help that they need. Even if you look under the stall doors, a predator could be anywhere, you know, just simply lifting their feet so you can't see them. Another method predators use is to wait outside the restroom until after you've entered and follow you in. Attacking you when you're doing your business catches you in one of the most compromising positions or situations you'll ever experience or expose yourself to. You know, with males, we're usually doing our business within 10 to 20 seconds after entering a restroom door. You know, the predator maybe saw that you paid cash for your burger at the fair, saw money, and who knows. But they could be monitoring and most likely are monitoring the restroom. Um, also, they work in pairs. You might think you're the only one in the restroom, but and you may be the only one in the restroom, but if they're watching you go in and they have a partner in crime, and now so many times evil travels in twos, one's watching out for anybody that might come in and help you. So they follow you in, they lock the door, their buddy's gonna intercept anybody and divert them to another restroom while inside. You know, if you're lucky, you'll wake up. If not, the evildoers will do their worst. The ladies, 
takes a little bit longer for them to start doing their business. And predators know this. Their timing is perfect. This kind of predator will have their timing down so much they'll be able to catch their victim at the exact position that they take their pants off and sit down. This is the most vulnerable, one of the most vulnerable situations a person can be in. So let's move on to rule four. Always go into a public restroom with another trusted person. Never go alone. Power in groups. Even lions attack the lone gazelle in the back of the pack. Girls instinctively go to the restroom in groups, which is absolutely the best practice. But if your boyfriend or husband doesn't want to wait in the restroom with you, Make sure they check it out first and wait right outside the door so that they can hear you make any noise whatsoever. You know, remember that if a bad person tells you to be quiet, that should be your cue to scream as loud as you can right then. Their controlling command to be quiet should trigger an instant scream. <coughs> If you've reasonably checked the restroom for predators and you're pretty sure you're alone, always listen for breathing or any other noise a would-be attacker would make if they're hiding. Remember, only after you're sure that you're alone should you lock the door. If the bad guy did steal away and hide in the restroom, remember, once you've locked the door, now you've prevented anyone else from coming in and helping you. Considering public restroom doors are usually commercial doors made of solid steel with steel door jams, the likelihood that a passerby could kick the door in or open the locked door is not likely. You know, if you're fighting off an attacker in a locked bathroom, now you gotta unlock the door before you get out and the bathroom becomes your prison or your tomb. You'll likely have to fight to unlock the door to get to safety after being assaulted during the assault, if you survive. It's safe to assume that most of these predators are good at what they do. In fact, they're probably way better at what they do than you are at defending against a surprise attack in a public place. We just don't expect it. A sneak attack from behind, being shoved into a restroom, or for a male, being standing at a urinal and being hit from the side or being hit from behind is a common way these guys hurt people. You know, they just want to get your money, they want to get your drugs, and to do that, they definitely don't want to get caught. Here's another reason why predators do what they do. These druggies suffer incredible pain as soon as the symptoms of withdrawal start to wear off. If you've ever heard the phrase strung out on drugs, it doesn't mean they're high on drugs. It means their drugs are wearing off and the pain of withdrawal is intense. They definitely can't get their drugs if they're arrested right away. So they're going to do their very best to get away with their crime, get to their drugs and beat back the demons of withdrawal. You know, this is how predators survive. It's how they feed their own children. All you know is what you hear on the news. So do you really trust the news? Our safety training is for anyone that wants to play it safe or be more safe in high risk public places. Safe Sensei training will also help open your perspective to the cold realities of the dangers that we all face in today's public places, particularly restrooms. Now, there's another even more dangerous animal I want to talk about, and that's rest stops. I know people kind of make jokes about uh, rest stops being unsavory places, but it is very real. A rest stop is always on a main artery of, of roads so they can get you away real quick. Have you ever seen a cop at a rest stop? I haven't. I'm sure some of you have. But by the time any witnesses could call 911, the victim could be abducted and abducted, that is, and immediately zipped away to a horrific death. If you or your child are indeed abducted or stolen, and the person taking you drives the speed limit 60 miles an hour for 10 minutes, the search area is 400 square miles. 
Let's say it takes the cops 10 minutes to get there, 10 minutes to figure out what's going on, and 10 minutes of searching. That's 30 minutes. That search area has now increased to 3,600 square miles. If you're not rescued in the first few minutes, the chances that you'll survive decrease dramatically minute by minute. It has never been more dangerous than it is right now. Something else. Some of us may think that this is an inner city or an urban problem. It's not. I live in a small town. It's not even a city. I live just outside Mount Rainier in the Great Pacific Northwest. There's only one grocery store in town. And every day in my little town, I see someone homeless, drug addicted. The best description for the people that I see out here are zombies, mostly heroin addicts. Some are meth heads. Some of them are suffering from drug-induced psychosis. And of course, there's homeless people who their mental challenges didn't stem from drugs, but it really doesn't matter. You know, what matters is this problem is getting worse, and this is why. Number one, Addiction is a tremendous problem in this country. Look at the opioid crisis. It's gone rampant. Number two, the homeless community today is mostly due to drug abuse. People get hooked on the pills. They're doing heroin. They'll do whatever they can to beat back that demon of the withdrawal symptoms. They get really, really sick fast. Like I said in other videos, the withdrawal symptoms are the number one concern that these people have, and it drives them mad. Uh, public places are now a homeless person's home. So when you're in a public place or in a public restroom, you are in a homeless person's house. This is how they see things. You're in a place they spend much of your time, much of their time, that is. They... If they bathe, they bathe in the sinks. The hand dryers make for great heaters when it gets cold out. You know, lastly, if you wanna be reasonably safe for reasonable reasons, make a plan. Talk with your family weekly. Ask your child or spouse, kind of surprise them, say, hey, what would you really do if a stranger entered your bathroom stall while you were sitting down? Catch them off guard, see what they say. That's gonna be how prepared they are if and when it happens to them, you know? I, I think it's better you catch them off guard now with some training rather than a predator or a bad guy catching them off guard at their worst. Maybe you'll share how your family can help another family, how one person can help another person. If you consider yourself a member of the prepper community or you just wanna be a prepared person, watch for the upcoming Safe Sensei training. And you have my word, it's gonna be great, invaluable training. And stay tuned for the next best escapes I'm gonna teach. So uh, we've got a great video here coming up for you. So stay tuned, watch that. And until next time, we'll see you on the safe side. What is the value of learning the skill to escape the grabbing attack of an abuser? Used one time, our escapes are priceless and life-saving. The most common way an abuser will grab their victim is by a wrist grab like this. As you can see, if I pull backward, the attacker gets stronger and that doesn't work. It's completely unnatural to move towards the attacker, but I'm gonna teach you how to do that safely. In some ways, your arm is actually stronger when your hand is open than when your hand is closed. This is called the live hand theory. And when somebody reaches out to grab your wrist, it's our natural instinct to make a fist when we pull away. But actually, if you make a fist and you tighten it up and you grab your wrist, and then you open your fingers, you'll feel your wrist expands and actually gets stronger. So when someone grabs you by the wrist, if you want to escape, open your hands and utilize the live hand theory. Extend your fingers and harden your arm. Rotate your palm up towards the sky. Aggressively move your elbow directly to the elbow of your attacker, popping your wrist free from the abuser's grab. You must move towards your attacker. 